Right, so the feud between Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the Walt Disney Company is escalating. Yesterday, Disney CEO Bob Iger publicly addressed the ongoing fight, calling the state's actions against Disney World, quote, anti-business and anti-Florida. Iger also accused DeSantis of retaliating against the company over its stance on LGBTQ issues. Speaking at Disney's annual shareholders meeting on Monday, Iger said DeSantis, a potential Republican presidential candidate, sought to punish a company for the exercise of a constitutional right. The governor got very angry about the position Disney took and seems like he's decided to retaliate against us, including naming of a new board to oversee the property and the business, Iger said during the question and answer portion of the meeting. The comment comes as DeSantis is calling for an investigation into Walt Disney World and you its former governing it board, which voted to limit its own power before DeSantis appointed his own members. Iger says Disney... I, plans to invest more than $17 billion at the theme park over the next 10 years, which is projected to create more than 13,000 jobs at Disney, as well as thousands of indirect jobs. So, Mike Barnacle, this is a problem. When, I think it's actually when, a perfect when, example. When DeSantis is doing more than shadow boxing mm -hmm. and people are coming back at him like Bob Iger, uh, on, on, on one side, and let's say Donald Trump on a debate stage, suddenly the shadow boxing and the yelling at women reporters and, and this all okay. very staged sort of uh, uh, outrage opera towards wokeness in America, what he, he considers everything wokeness in America, or it suddenly kind of falls flat. And you have somebody like Iger, one of the best business people around, going, this is this guy's anti-business. This guy's like attacking a business for exercising their constitutional rights. Uh, you know, it's not quite so easy when DeSantis is doing more than shadow boxing and somebody steps back into the ring and you look at this. He just knocked DeSantis' head off. He just did. I mean, it's there's nothing conservative about what DeSantis is doing, whether it's attacking Disney because they're exercising a constitutional right or attacking T Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay Rays because they tweet uh, uh, concerned about the, the, the slaughter in Uvalde or whether he attacks cruise lines who are trying to keep their customers safe, telling them what they cannot do or attack small business owners, telling them what they cannot do to try to keep people in their store safe and try to keep money coming into their stores during COVID. Like this is this is using centralized state power in a way that is anything but conservative. And Iger uh, just pointed that out very clearly yesterday. Here is one way to look at what is going on down there in Florida with regard to DeSantis, Joe. Uh, everybody is talking about the prospect of DeSantis versus Trump and what's going to happen. And Trump has a big lead. And DeSantis is going to announce for president at some point in time. And when the two of them get in the ring, what will happen? Well, we know what will happen based upon his getting in the ring with Bob Iger and Disney. It turns out that Governor DeSantis is Kid Candle. One blow and he's out. From Bob Iger, one of the premier CEOs, business guys, as you just pointed out, in the world. And he had had enough of DeSantis and enough of DeSantis' uh, little play on uh, trying to govern Disney World, taking on Mickey Mouse. And Bob Iger took care of him, boom, like that. So long, Governor DeSantis. Really? Wow. Kid Candle. Yeah, pretty good for Mike Barnacle just now. Was that the guy in Tyson's Punch Out? No, that was Glass. That Joe. was Glass yeah. Jaw, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah That's, Glass we Joe. should add that to the updated version. But, Joe, I'll defer to you as a, a Florida native on this question of what Disney Florida. means to that state. There's 75,000 Disney employees in the state of Florida. It's amazing. They have like 50 million <laughs> visitors come from around the world yeah. to the state of Florida. Forget yes. all the other jobs they create around Disney. Um, and it, as Mika just said, they're going to invest $17 billion more. So an odd fight to pick maybe to win a few primary voters in South Carolina. <laughs> It is. It is. I, really I thought this boxing. from the very beginning to to have a woke crusade against Mickey Mouse, <laughs> against Disney. Like, you know, Trump people love going to Disney World. I go to Disney World. I see with my kids. I see them there 
all the time. It's such a strange, it's just like attacking the Tampa Bay Rays and using state power to hurt a Florida baseball team, a hugely successful franchise, by the way, because they tweeted something in solidarity with the people of Uvalde after the mass slaughter of children. And like I said, telling small business owners what they can and cannot do if, 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 if to keep their stores safe. Again, it's all, it's all shock opera. It's all Caddy K. It's all shock opera. And, you know, I'm a conservative guy. There's a lot of things with woke culture that I've been concerned about through the years, mainly kids. Well, kind of like I felt at times in school, not being able to say what they want to say on college campuses. With, with what my fear was not a social fear so much as it was that my professors would give me bad grades. But there's a lot of stuff that I'm worried about. But at this point, when I read yet another column or see another saddest press conference, whether it's from the left or the right, second they say woke, I just tune out. And I know if I'm doing it, and it's an issue I've been concerned about for several years, everybody's doing it except for the extremes on both sides. And I think that's what DeSantis doesn't understand. He goes to war against Mickey Mouse on something that's so 2019, 2020, that it just sounds shrill. Yeah, and by the way, on that cancel culture issue around college campuses, there's a really thoughtful article by a young woman who's just graduated from Stanford. I think it was in the Washington Post. Read it because it's really nuanced and there is not much nuance in this discussion um, and it's really sane on this whole issue. But it is anti-business. I mean, in some senses, you've got the same kind of thing going on in Texas, too. I was reading this Economist profile of Texas just recently about how Texas has all these great things going for it, but it could just be that the government, a Republican government, stands in the way of what business is trying to do. It's certainly not the libertarian attitude to government when you start telling businesses what they can say, what they can't say, how they can act and how they can't act. It just, it, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it could drag Texas's economy down. And I wonder whether you're going to start seeing the same kind of pushback in Florida because it's, it's not what Floridian businesses going to Florida want to be told. And by the way, Gene Robinson, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, I just, when I hear people whining about what corporations are doing and mm. oh, they're communist, they're woke, they're, it's like, grow up, grow Correct. up. If they think those people are doing anything other than for the bottom line, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not being too cynical about corporations here. They get paid and they succeed when their company makes more money. So if yeah. they're talking that way, it's because they believe it will help them in the marketplace. Right. It's like when BP used to have those preposterous commercials about what tree huggers they were. <laughs> Nobody believed it. Yeah. They were just they were they were polluting the gulf and so they had a lot of people go, you know, I like when butterflies fly through it. And he was like, dude, you're an oil company. They were trying to get Fossil right. fuels. I just, say, just stop pretending. And that's the same thing where they're like, oh, they're woke and they're communists. No, they're not. They're capitalists. They only care about money. And so if yeah. they're taking a position, whether it's a position on women's rights, whether it's a position Ooh. on LBGTQ issues, they're doing it because they think it's going to help their bottom line. Opposite Absolutely. of communism. <laughs> Absolutely. And and when corporations take more progressive positions, what what they're actually doing is they're appealing to younger customers because they want to get them in the habit of, of you know, using their gasoline or going to their theme parks. And and because that's the future. That's how they're going to grow. Yes. That's how they're going to make money. And that's period full stop that's the, that's period. the reason Thanks, Ron, and, uh, it, 
to not understand that is mind blowing. But uh, but my question is whether the Republican Party is actually becoming the anti business party. They are, are you kidding me? They I mean, are. What, you know, have I just you know gone through some sort of portal and entered the bizarro universe where the Republicans are anti business and, and it's the Democrats who are who are essentially waving the flag for big big business? I mean, that seems to be kind of where we are right now. It's, it's just crazy. By the way, it's upside down. It's what Kevin Williamson wrote about a couple of years ago. Republicans are having their hippie moment. It's what we talk about here. Conservatives couldn't stand how liberals, for people on the far left, <clears throat> used to drive down and attack the military. How they would say hippies would attack the military, hippies would attack this FBI, hippies would attack the CIA, hippies would attack college campuses, they would attack the church, they would attack all the institutions that 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 that, that, that create the foundation of American civil society. This is now, corporations, this is now the rights hippie moment.